Hey guys, the Network Bear here. Hope you've been doing well. So, you haven't seen me for a while, maybe you thought I've gone away. Bad news for you, I haven't. I'm still around. I've actually immigrated to a different country, which is the reason for creating this video because I want to stress and tell you guys how awesome I think Microtech is when it comes to also traveling. I'm still using Microtech to connect my home devices. Now, currently my wife and I and our son are residing with some family or relatives of hers. Um, but we are connecting to their network, but I am using my own Microtech for that still. So I'm still able to manage my own little Microtech network. I can connect my devices to my Microtech and still manage them accordingly so I can see exactly what's happening with my network traffic. But I don't want to specifically talk about my HAP AX3 that I brought with me. I maybe want to have a look at some smaller devices that Microtech provides that can actually fit in your pocket. Like this little guy here. This is a HAP Mini that I actually got from a Microtech mum a couple of years ago. And even though this little man only does 10100 on its ethernet ports what i find really awesome is the fact that you can power it via usb now this means that you can set this up with something like a power bank or with your laptop or with an adapter as well where you can connect this little guy onto the network and then you can connect either via cable preferably i'd suggest connecting to cable with a hap mini or a hap light so that you can still use the wireless radio to connect to your hotel's wi-fi network and then you can set up security on your Microtik. Maybe you can create something like a VPN tunnel via WireGuard or something else like IPsec out to the network so that your traffic is encrypted over that wireless interface so that nobody can see what you're doing. And then you've got a pretty secure LAN network behind this router that you can effectively manage. So that is what we are going to do with this little guy now. I'm actually going to set up a small lab. I have factory reset it. I've also loaded this with the latest available firmware on Microtik's website. So I'm just going to show you how quick and easy it is to set up a on-the-go Microtik to just get going and start doing stuff while traveling. So this is awesome. Alright, so I'm going to connect via Winbox to this little HAP Mini that I have and it is just using the bare bones configuration. So here we can see the default config is running. It's just some basic firewall rules and some fast track and stuff like that enabled. Pretty good stuff if you just want a generic setup for your Microtik, but I'll leave everything as is. I'll hit OK. Maybe set a new password if you don't have a password configured. So I'll just set one of my own and I'll just update that. And I can just close all these windows so that we can quickly see what is going on. So if I look at the interfaces, we can see there are a couple of interfaces. There is actually a bridge set up. And by default, with your HAP Mini or most Microtix, actually, you might see that your WLAN interface or interfaces, depending on how many radios your device has, as well as your Ethernet to, to and up, will typically be bridged with your LAN. So it's kind of like having the switch on your router. And Ether 1 is typically reserved for your WAN connectivity. So there's firewall rules that will also restrict access to it. So that's why we connect it onto Ether 3 in this case, onto the Microtik just to configure it. Now our goal is actually to connect onto a public SSID on this Microtik, and then we can connect via our cable on our laptop or machine or whatever we have with us. Um, unfortunately, this is if you're this is not going to work for your phones. If you want this set up for your phones, you are going to need a little bit of a bigger Microtik, maybe something like a HAP AX3 or AC AX2 or something that has multiple radios, so that one radio can be still bridged with your LAN network, while the other radio connects and act as a separate interface to the internet. Now, this is nice for me for my laptop or just my general setup, just to have the security for any sensitive data I might be working with, because then I can obviously configure additional stuff like WireGuard, VPN out over the WLAN interface or IPsec, so that the wireless people can't see what I'm doing behind my network, which is awesome. So in essence, what I want to do is first, let's just connect onto the wireless SSID. So I do have a wireless hotspot running on my phone actually. And I know what the details are, but let's just do this in a generic way. Maybe you're in a hotel lobby and you, you're trying to figure this stuff out. We can just scan for networks, click on the start button, and it will populate what networks it can see. Now, I've already seen the SSID for my hotspot that I configured. So I can just click on this and click on connect. 
and it will automatically fill in the stuff like the frequency list, what the SSID is, etc. Now I would recommend just tuning these details a bit better if there's some additional stuff that you have like setting your country to whatever country you're currently in. But we can see here it will use the default security profile. So I can just click on OK. Let's go into our security profiles. And let's quickly set our mode for dynamic keys. Now my hotspot is using WPA2 PSK. This is not Wi-Fi Wave 2, so you're not gonna have WPA3 with this, unfortunately. But most, I think, public spaces will have this protocol or this authentication type enabled by default. So let me just set my pre-shared key quickly. Hit apply. And once that's done, now I can actually show you, if I go to the registration, we will see that we have registered on our WLAN interface to something, which is now my hotspot, which could be the hotel lobby. Now, from here, there's a few more things that we actually want to do as well. So I actually want to remove this wireless interface from the bridge. So I can navigate to my bridges or bridge, and I can go to the ports, and I'm just going to remove the WLAN one interface so that it acts on its own. Reason I do that is because now I can actually add this as a DHCP client and it will obtain an IP address from my provider. Um, and it will just kind of work the way that I want it to work as a traveling router. So I'm just going to set the or remove this WLAN one. So now that that's been removed, if I go back to my interfaces, it's no longer part of a bridge, it is a master interface on its own now. So I can just go into my IP, DHCP client, and then I'm just going to add a DHCP client to my WLAN one. And I will say I wanted to add a default route as well. You'll see the ether one is also set there by default, but since I'm not plugging anything in directly to ether one, uh, it's it's not doing anything, but that's a nice thing. Maybe <laughs> the hotel lobby also offers connectivity via cable medium. Then you could connect Ether One, and would also obtain an IP address from their network, and it would do the same thing. It would still work as a nice little travel router, which is cool. So we can see I've obtained an IP address from my hotspot or my access point. So with that, if I look at my routing table, I'll see that I have obtained a default route out. And if I test from my terminal, I should actually have internet access. Oh, sorry, I just need to set my password as well. So if I do a ping out to something like Google's DNS server 8888, I can see I do have internet access. So that is fantastic. But does that actually trickle down to my clients, to my host that's connected to this access point or to this microtick? Let's just open up a new terminal window here. And if I do something like a ping, to 8888, is anything happening? Nothing is happening. <laughs> so that sucks. So reason why that's not working is because if I look at my IP firewall, and I do actually wanna get to this NAT tab. If we go to the NAT, there is this default rule enabled from the default configuration, where it is set to only NAT traffic out leaving via this out interface list, this WAN interface list. So that is being masqueraded. But I only removed WLAN from the bridge, but I didn't actually add this to an interface list. So let's just add it to the same interface list and that should actually solve the issue. So if I go into my interface list, just hit the plus, and then I can say I want WLAN one to be part of my WAN interface list. Hit okay. And there we go. So now in theory, if I go back onto my command prompt, let's quickly see if I ping out now, does it work? No, it doesn't work. But I know also why it's not working because I've already fiddled around with this lab before and my machine most likely just has a previous DHCP binding. So let's just quickly jump on here and do an IP config release and a renew. And once we've released and renewed our IP configuration, Though maybe you won't even need to do this in your setup, it's just because I've actually been fiddling around with this router or router, but this is just something for, for reference. So now that that's been done, let's quickly go back here and see, can I ping out to the internet? And hey, presto, I can actually see, I can reach Google's DNS server. Do I actually have DNS as well? Pinggoogle.com. And I do, so we actually have success. So this has now actually been set up as a little nice travel router, but this is very basic setup at the moment. You could 
add more to this if you maybe want to set up something like a WireGuard tunnel over the WLAN so that your traffic is encrypted properly. You could just go to the WireGuard, configure a WireGuard connection to your WireGuard provider of choice. Maybe it's something in the cloud, um, like the videos that I've set up in AWS. I'd recommend watching that if you haven't seen that before. Otherwise, you could set up a WireGuard connection to something like Molvad just to have that additional layer of security so that people on the wireless network can't see what you're doing. They'll just see encrypted traffic, which is always nice. But now that we've gone through the setup itself, I actually want to also show you the specs for this new Microtik HAP Lite, um, HAP AX3, <laughs> HAP AX6, uh, Wi-Fi 6. Uh, let's just go on to it. <laughs> it's, it's pretty crazy. Um, I actually think it's a HAP AX Lite. I'm so confusing the words now, but if we go into microtik.com, microtik.com, uh, even though my hotspot is a little bit slow, we will get there. So if I go onto the hardware and we maybe look, there we see it's, it's the first thing here. It's a HAP AX Lite LTE 6. This device's specs is really crazy for this price. And like I said, this is awesome for a little travel device because if we go into this and we just look at some of the specs, you can already see it's running ARM. This means that you can also set up stuff like zero tier using it. But what I find really cool about this device is that it has an LTE modem built into it. So you can actually just connect a SIM into the Microtik, power it up with your power bank, and then it will have internet access out that way as well. And it fits in your pockets, literally the small. You can put it in your, your, your front pocket or in your pants, or you can put it in your suitcase as well as I did with my AX3. Uh, and just lug it around and it's it's really so lightweight. But what I like about this device besides the LTE, it's also Wi-Fi 6, only 2.4 gigahertz unfortunately, but it is Wi-Fi 6 as well. So definitely a bit faster on that front. And it also has gigabit ethernet. So all four of the ports on it is 10, 100, 1000. So you will definitely have increased speed over this HAP Mini that I just showcased the same, same type of setup that you might want to run. And then you have all these other peripherals uh, just to show you how you might be able to power it on. But it's such a little awesome, powerful device. And I think this puts Microtik really so far ahead when it comes to having network equipment that you can take with you for traveling. Because like I said, I've immigrated to a different country and Microtik has just made it so much easier for me to still manage the network the way that I want to and if you were maybe traveling abroad, going to different countries, going on holiday, and you just want that added layer of security and you want this device in your pocket, Microtik has it for you. So that is really cool. And it comes with all of the tools, bells and whistles that you might want on a Microtik that you can do additional scans and stuff with. Anyways, this is going to be where I will be ending off the video. I'm really happy to see you guys again. I'm happy that I could make another video and hopefully I can make, make another one soon without waiting around too much because I'm just busy job hunting at the moment. So right now I think I can also make quite a few YouTube videos while waiting. So I'm happy to see you guys again and I'm looking forward to making some more content with you. So see you around. Hope you had fun. Hope you learned something new. Bye.